Hello everybody, my name is Alan Jarmais. I'm here with Matthias Skotberg uh, at TCT 2023. And Matthias just had a late-breaking uh, trial uh, presentation. Congratulations. How was your experience? Uh, this is not your first time, so uh, uh, no big deal? No, no big deal. But it's great to finally be able to share the data. We've been holding it very tight for the last few weeks, so it's really great to share the data with the world. Well, let me give a bit of background, and then we're going to talk about the data. So I'm sure, as you're aware, there has been uh, some recent debate um, about uh, the difference between IFR and FFR specifically around the presentation of uh, defined flare five-year results, which happened last year at ESC and led to a subsequent uh, meta-analysis, actually two meta-analyses that were published based on the combined data set from defined flare and sweetheart five-year results. And the combined, combined data set raised some concerns um, that there was an increased mortality um, in the IFR group at five years compared with FFR guidance. There is some nuances to that, um, which we're going to discuss in a minute. But I think what's uh, more interesting um, and more pressing at this point is to hear maybe the registry that you continued after the trial. Maybe talk a little bit about the background, how the data set was, was established. Yeah, so, so just a little bit of background about this. Uh, we conducted this analysis in Sweden. And in Sweden, we have unique personal identifiers, which means that basically we can track every patient from the cradle to the grave. And, and this coupled with our national quality registers means that we can track every patient who's being admitted for a myocardial infarction. We track every patient who undergone a coronary angiogram or revascularization. And in the case the patient dies, we will track that accurately as well, including cause of death. So this allows us really to not only do randomized trials, but also do observational trials that are large so a, in this specific large uh, and high quality, if I may say, right? Yes, because Thank of you, the yeah. structure. Yeah, and and you know, normal randomized trials simply have like a five to ten percent loss to follow up in a one to two year uh, time span, whereas we can actually track hundred percent of our patients indefinitely. So we really don't lose any patients, and this allows us to accurately more assess outcome. So then you basically completed um, the trial, the trial parts which is randomized, of course. But then now you have access to all the data and, and you know what happened after the trial in clinical practice, how many people had physiology guided PCI and how many of those had IFR, FFR, and then you follow those patients out, right? Correct. And yeah. then what happened? I'm at the edge of my seat. You're at the edge of your seat. So uh, what we did, uh, we included patients in the analysis who had done either IFR and FFR. We discarded patients uh, who done both, which are a number of patients, but then in the, in the end, we actually came up with more than 42,000 patients that we were able to follow up, up for two, five years. And what we find really was there was no difference in outcome uh, between the two indices. Perhaps not too surprising, but I mean, obviously given the Define Flare five-year data, we wanted to investigate this further. So um, in terms of MACE, there was no difference. But we also looked at the components of MACE, all-cause death, myocardial infarction, and unplanned revascularization separately. Couldn't really find anything at all. No signal of either in this index being better than the other. We also looked at deferred patients and revascularized patients since identified flare was the revascularized patients at a higher mortality. But we couldn't really find any signal that either index was better. They were just similar all across the board. So just to be clear and to repeat, you looked specifically at patients that were deferred or that got treated based on IFR or FFR, and in either group, there was no significant difference in any of the endpoints, including death. Correct. Right. Yes. Okay. So then, let me ask this question. Um, I believe the data set, 42,000 patients, is obviously pretty good. But there was a signal, let's be honest, mostly in defined flare, less so in, in IFR Sweetheart, although there was a, a trend in IFR Sweetheart as well. What we did find, which is interesting, and you pointed that out, that there was no difference at all in deferred patients. And that's really the, the biggest concern for most people. You know, what happens if I defer based on IFR because more patients got deferred when they were in the IFR group. But all patients that were deferred, there was no difference at all between the two groups. There was only a difference in patients that got treated in, in, yeah. in defined, right? So how do you explain that? 
Well, you know, even, interestingly enough, I mean, if you even if you have what we think a play of chance of an increased mortality, we actually found data to, to actually understand why they were accumulated among the patients who were revascularized. And what we find in our data set was that the baseline characteristics, in other words, the comorbidities, differed between IFR and FFR depending if you were deferred or revascularized. So what it tells us that depending on comorbidities, you get slightly different answers between IFR and FFR. So the short of it is that among patients in the IFR group, they were older, they're more often women, uh, they uh, had more diabetes, they had borderline more cancer, they had more renal failure. So what we know from this from before is that older patients have actually less response from adenosine. We know that these are the same patients that have a low CFR. So what it really tells us that IFR it tells us these lesions are significant and they become revascularized, whereas FFR tells us that these lesions are not significant and then they're deferred. And what we saw really is that we did see this excess mortality, but it was not a coroner mortality that, right. and this is important. So it's important. more an association than a causality in itself. It just tells us that we get slightly different answers between IFR and FFR. Right. And I, I might add one other point, which is, like you said before, so if, in the deferred patients where we saw the difference in mortality, there was no difference in TVR or MI. So there's no causal explanation for why we see this. And I have a bit of background from somebody who, who was running the, the clinical events committee, the CEC, for defined flare, which was fine up until the study endpoint. But at five years, COVID happened. And so a lot of patients obviously died and with no explanation. And just as a definition of the study, anybody who died without knowing why they died, it was considered a cardiovascular death. Just this is how the trial was designed. And so I think there might have been a lot of COVID mortality, which was not really accounted for in the trial, unfortunately. And so that could have also influenced, you know, the signal. Indeed, I, and I think this gets, but overall, I mean, what made me suspicious that this is not a true signal was really the fact that normally, uh, if IFR would have been a worse index, you would see it because you would have more unplanned revascularization. You got to die of something. Uh, you got to, yeah, of course, and, and more MIs. But we really didn't see anything at all. We just saw this spurious increase in, in mortality among the treated patients, which didn't really make any sense. So it feels, for me, I feel very comfortable now we have that much larger data set confirming that there is in fact no difference between the indices. All right, I think that summed it up nicely and I could not agree with you more. Congratulations, I think that was an amazing presentation. I hope it's going to be published soon as a, as a full manuscript. It's a really important paper and um, thank you for watching this. Thank you for having me.